from this to this. Welcome to the patio for an update on how my Tolumnias and Semi-Hydro fared. I am absolutely certain your keen eye has already picked up on something not being quite right with one of them. It's a beautiful day, awesome time to be in southern Spain. Good to have you here. Let me get the elephant out of the room. And let's start with the uh, hmm, negative before we get to the hmm, positive. <laughs> this is Tolumnia pomegranate, super vigorous orchid. When I got her, thank you so much, I Karen Orchids and Tokyo World Mark. And because she was so vigorous, I thought I would attempt to get a semi-hydro setup working again for this orchid. I had enough growth to play with. Of course, it was not my intention to decimate her. But when it comes to Tolumnias and semi-hydro, I have had some failures in the past with Lekka and self-watering with very small orchids. So that was my mistake. And then after a few years, when I received this orchid, I thought, yeah... You're a perfect candidate, and I'm going to test another way of getting a Tolumnia to grow in semi-hydroponics. You can see that not everything went according to my plan. <laughs> yeah, so we lost quite a bit of growth throughout the center. Uh, this lead is not looking too hot, <laughs> but we have a new growth coming in the back, so I would like to preserve that. My intention is not to kill the orchid, my intention is not to unpot the orchid today, but we are going to correct what I believe went wrong. My intention is to successfully grow this orchid in semi-hydro, no matter the season. Now, trying to make myself feel a little bit better, all this happened during the winter. So now I know what she cannot take during the winter. Of course, Tolumnias are very prone to rot at the base. I thought with my dry top layer of very, very minuscule grit here, that I would avoid getting water or too much humidity around the base. That did not work because being in semi-hydro, I also didn't water from the top of the pot. I soaked the pot in a bowl, letting the water fill up to the reservoir holes, letting the reservoir absorb what I thought was enough because of all the wicking material inside the pot. And then I thought, yeah, that should be fine, except that the cold temperatures plus the added humidity in the air, yeah, the wicking was so efficient <laughs> uh, that my surface dry top layer was not dry at all. So epic fail there. Anyway, that is why we're going to address her. Then, unfortunately, you see how beautiful this part of the lead is growing. I mean, the size is really amazing. And then I had several weeks back to back of very low temperatures, overcast days. I couldn't bring this Tolumnia out to get some airflow going around her. The days were too cold even for a Tolumnia. So it, it was all a bit of a dance. Anyway, we're going to address her. She is not a lost cause and I'd like to keep it that way. I would like to improve what is going to happen next winter while I bring her back to strength this summer. That is the plan with my Tolumnia pomegranate. Here is my Tolumnia. I call her Carmen. She is a no ID, but she has such pretty red blooms. Carmen is a very fitting name. And it was suggested to me by an orchid ninja, Snow Dragon Kassan, so we adopted that name. She is only in small lava rock, also in semi-hydro, also above the media. The base is not touching the media. And look at her go. Look at this. What a beautiful new growth that developed throughout the winter. Now, I doubt she's going to bloom for me because she didn't have enough of the light levels that are required. But look, I don't have any cold damage on the leaf tips based on what you see her history shows right here. Lots of cold damage. <laughs> it worked. So my consensus is if you're in a very dry climate like mine and then you move into a very high humid and cold climate as in the winter, lava rock is awesome. And I would suggest because the roots are so tiny that you use small lava rock so that the water retention remains high in the pot. Lava not being a wicking agent, but because it's got so many nooks and crannies and is so porous, it is highly water retentive. And with that, the water dissipates and distributes throughout the pot. I think 
Small Lava Rock is super successful. I'm so happy that Carmen did so well throughout the winter. This is also going to work during the summer because during the summer, it's okay for me to be pouring water into the surface of the pot and let it drain out. So small lava rock it is. And now all of you that know how I work with lava rock are already fully aware what we're going to be doing with Tulumnia pomegranate and trying not to unpot her at the same time. So let's have a look what's going on in the pot. Push comes to shove. I will unpot her. Let's see. It is also high noon that I do this now because I have not watered her in at least a month. Yeah, so some of the desiccation of the leaves I'm hoping I can attribute to not having been watered for so long. And I did this with Akadama, super highly water retentive, wicking, etc. I guess we are going to unpot her. <laughs> she came out all of her own accord and she's not happy. Now, the fact that the roots died, I am not surprised because they were used to a wet dry cycle and I promptly put them into a very, very water retentive media, but they're not all dead. Now, somebody asked me in a recent video how to identify dead tulumnia roots with live tulumnia roots. Well, here's the thing. You see, this is a little bit more white right here. These roots are alive and then you can see how brown and sad and desiccated they look down here, these roots are dead. So you could theoretically go out and chop off every single dead root. For example, this one, this little pairing here is dead. Whereas, you know, we've got more live roots, I suppose, I'm hoping in the center there, you can see the white roots there in the center. Those are alive. We could chop out all the dead roots, etc. I am not going to do that. I am going to leave her as it is because we're going to put her back into lava rock after I cleaned up this surprise mess. <laughs> this was not intentional. Anyway, I'll be right back with this container emptied out elsewhere, minimize my mess, and then we'll just pot her back up into lava rock. While I do that, would you please give this video a like I would so appreciate it. And if you know anybody that also wants to grow their tulumnias in semi-hydro, but isn't sure because of the tiny little bases, share this video to them and tell them, check it out. The lava rock worked, highly wicking material did not. So that would be awesome if you would share the video as well. And if you haven't done so, subscribe. Thank you. What we're going to do to save on resources is put some of the lecker that I take out that I don't like to use for the majority of my pots. It's kind of cracked, broken, split. I use that for crocking to just save on other resources that I do use a lot in my pots. And it also gives me the opportunity to have a wicking agent right at the base. I'll just fill that up to the holes where the semi-hydro holes are that same level. We'll put the tag back in so that the jiggling at the end is minimized. All right, so we've done that. Now, I don't wanna be using all that small lava rock around to fill up the next layer. So I'm just gonna throw in very large lava rock. And then we're gonna check our levels here. And because the root system is compromised, I can squash it to get the orchid into the level that I want. I'm just making sure that I judge my growing points because I want to take advantage of the corners. What I could do is divide her, but I'm not gonna do that. The rhizome is supporting both ends, but I've got a nice growing point moving in this direction to the corner there. I'd like to maintain that. And I've got the other growing point working its way into the corner over there. That is all facing the semi-hydro holes. We don't like that because when she blooms, that is what we would be seeing. So we're gonna take that into consideration as well and move her to face and grow into the opposite corners, Gomsa. Now I'm just gonna start with large lava rock around her, stabilize her. Seeing as the roots are shot, most of them, not all of them, but most of them are shot, 
It's fine that I'm using large lava rock. It's not like they even had a chance to get accustomed to anything highly water retentive. So we're going to continue with large lava rock. The reason I want to end with small lava rock is because of the fine roots, the new roots that are coming. I want to be able to make sure that they find their way straight into the pot as opposed to going every which way, crawling over the surface of large lava rock and then probably frazzling out on me. Remember, I am in a super dry climate for most of the year and this is me just trying to get roots into the pot and then whatever they do around the large lava rock, I'm not that fast. Once they're in the pot, it's the most important thing. Get them in the pot. So we're going to be anticipating new roots from three points. And that's where the small lava rock will go. Let's make sure that she stays nice and low. Another thing I found super interesting just now because she fell out of the pot was the fact that after four weeks, there's just a tiny little bit of damp left on the roots. You can see, you can see here the akadama is damp because it's still brown. Let me make sure you can see that. It would otherwise be a very light beige. So that was interesting. Just as a point of reference for any future setups in a small pot like this. And I just saw another new growth. So I'm having high hopes now and she's going to be okay. I would never do this with any of the tiny fans, small tolumnias. I would not risk it. They are too fragile. They don't have, let's say, enough resources to sustain themselves because imagine if this orchid only had one or two fans and I put her into semi-hydro when I did, heading into fall and winter, yeah, we would have lost her. Absolutely. The fact she has such large structures and is vigorous, that was my saving grace when it came to this orchid. So it's not like now I'm sort of thinking, yeah, all my tolumnias can go into semi-hydro. That is not what I'm trying to attempt here. But I did want to figure out the configuration of a tolumnia in semi-hydro also going through horrible conditions, not tolumnia friendly, and not only because of the high humidity which they would like, but because of low light levels not being able to photosynthesize, mainly the low temperatures. And I think Whew, we got away with it because we used a very, very vigorous tolumnia to begin with. So before I flush water through her, I just want to show you that I'm hoping to get these roots, new roots, into the pot quickly. So we'll be watching that for the future reference. This little growth would appear to have done its thing. It's not going to grow any bigger, but it has as yet to produce some roots. But look what I also just discovered while doing all this. There's a tiny little new growth coming out of this side. So I'm pretty hopeful that this is going to work, even though <laughs> I really did a number on her. So let me get some fresh water just to flush through the pot, put some water into the reservoir, and then we consider this a reset. The leaves on my pomegranate in the camera look much more yellow than they are in real life. It doesn't mean that this fan is not going to go because you can see the yellow starts at the base and is moving up. That means the base was far too wet and the leaves are slowly, there's no rot, no active rot, but this part down here was affected during the winter. So I watered my Carmen before filming. I'll we'll just give this pot a little bit of a flush through and we'll be following how this is going to work out now during the growing season. I'm pretty hopeful. I'll probably have to interfere if she's still around spring next year, because if she's going to grow vigorously during this period, then the pomegranate is going to need a bigger pot. That scenario would be ideal. I hope that this was helpful, if not of interest. Maybe it brought you to thinking that you could do this as well for your tolumnias. Seeing how my ratio was completely off at the beginning, I was too heavy handed with the wicking material. And I'm so glad in a way that I had the counterpart right here to show me what will actually work. I'll be interested to see your comments. Leave me a comment. Let me know you're here. 
let me know what you think. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.